Uncharted Legacy of Feast Collection was something that I really enjoyed diving back into on the PlayStation 5 when it released earlier this year. It was one of my favorite games because I'm a big fan of the Uncharted franchise. I've been there since the beginning when the first title came out on the PlayStation 3 a long time ago, like 2007. It's kind of crazy when you look back as to when a lot of these new franchises started out. But I was there when that came out and I really enjoyed, you know, each entries that came out. And then when Uncharted 4 Thieves In came out and then we followed that up with Lost Legacy, those are two amazing titles for 2017 and 2018 respectively. So what happens after that? Well, we didn't get any new Uncharted games. I mean, it's been dormant since 2018's Lost Legacy. Then in the beginning of this year, Sony decided to remaster them for the PlayStation 5. And they also decided, hey, we put it on PlayStation 5, let's go ahead and put it on PC because PlayStation has been killing it with putting their titles on PC. And that's what we're here to talk about, which is Uncharted Legacy of Thieves for PC and also for the Steam Deck because I've been playing it a lot on the Steam Deck and I wanna go ahead and let you guys know how it runs on that. <laughs> So with all that being said, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to PlayStation 4 providing a review copy of this game for PC. And beyond that, if you enjoy the content I put out, make sure you like the video, sub to the channel if you haven't already, and ding the notification bell. With all that being said, let's dive into this review of Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection. Alright, so I previously reviewed this game on PlayStation 5 and I basically gave a really good rundown of that. But what I want to do now is tell you guys how it runs on my PCs, like both my desktop and my gaming laptop, as well as on Steam Deck. So we'll start off with letting you know how I ran on my desktop. So on my desktop, uh, I have an RTX 3070 rocking i7-10700K with 32 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 megahertz of RAM, of which I ran this game on ultra settings at 4K 120 frames per second with DLSS quality turned on. And on my gaming laptop, which is an Asus ROG M16 2021 edition, which comes with a RTX 3060 rocking an i9 11900 H and I've got 40 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM at 3200 megahertz on high settings at 1440p 120 frames per second DLSS performance turned on and these are both running Windows 11. Now being able to utilize DLSS is a godsend although if you have a powerful enough rig then you won't need to utilize DLSS at all. If you are on an AMD setup, then you have the option of utilizing the FSR support. You'll have a plethora of display options to tweak and tons of accessibility options that you can easily configure to get the best experience for your setup. There is no way for me to test this game on all PC configurations, but the game is so well optimized that you can expect it to work well on pretty much anything, even running a GTX 1060 and up. On the Steam Deck, the games ran rather smoothly with Thieves in running a variable refresh rate that fluctuates between 35 frames per second and 60 frames per second, and Lost Legacy running at a mostly locked 30 frames per second, although that really happens when you know, you're in very densely, you know, populated areas it's like the area you start the game off with when like there's a lot of people in the shopping area. So that right there tends to make it run at a lock 30 frames per second. But once you get past that, it starts running at a variable refresh rate anyway, because it'll go from 35 frames per second to about 60 frames per second, which is it's kind of interesting that it does that. But yeah, the more you get into areas that are densely like packed with people, that's when you're gonna run into like that locked 30 frames per second. The resolution is set to 1280 by 800 with the rendering resolution being 853 by 533 and the aspect ratio is set to auto. AMD FSR is on by default, set to quality with FSR sharpness at 35 and render scale at 100 and V-Sync on. If you want to get a more stable frame rate for Thieves in, then I would recommend setting your refresh rate to 40 hertz as a sweet spot. Unfortunately, with Lost Legacy, I was not able to get it to consistently run at that 40 hertz, even when I set it to it, because it still wanted to do variable refresh rate. So, you know, just keep that in mind. When it comes to the battery life when playing these on Steam Deck, I was able to get roughly an hour and a half with the default settings. And when I tinkered with the TDP and screen brightness, I was able to get about two hours tops. And one of the things I do want to mention is the fact that Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection does make your Steam Deck run rather hot. Like even in comparison to running God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, and even Day is Gone. Like for some reason it just really pushes it and blows out so much hot air that when you touch the back of it, it's really, really hot. So I'm hoping optimizations get better for this as time goes on because 
that's a little concerning to me. And especially if you utilize the case, it's really concerning on how hot it does get. So do keep that in mind if you do plan to play this on your Steam Deck. When it comes to controls, you have the option to either play the game with a traditional controller or keyboard and mouse combo. Which is better? Well, that's truly up to you and how you prefer the game. Personally, I find the standard controller setup to be the most comfortable as I was playing the game with the Vitrix Pro Gamut controller and the Turtle Beach Recon and React R controller and utilize the ability to custom map actions to the back pedals of the controllers. When I play with a keyboard and mouse, I switch between using the Rocket Vulcan 2 Max and the Vulcan 2 Mini, with my mouse being the Rocket Cone XP Air and Cone XP. The audio options are solid with me using my Rocket Sin Max Air and getting the full effect of hearing everything from the floor and fauna to gunshots and all the minute details in between. So you might be wondering what about the multiplayer from the original PlayStation 4 release and just like with the PlayStation 5 release, you know, that's just a mode you're just not going to find here. It's been left out of the previous PlayStation 5 release and while that's not really much of an issue for me given that I didn't play that mode, there are some that who you know thoroughly enjoyed it and will find it a shame that it's not available anymore so the tldr question is is uncharted legacy of thieves collection worth purchasing on a pc well if you've never played either title and have already played and enjoyed the first three titles then yes this is a worthwhile purchase which will net you hours upon hours of fun and replay value if you've already played both games and want to see what they look like on your pc or steam deck with all the additional improvements and performance enhancements then this is a no-brainer. It is unfortunate that the first three titles are not on Steam yet, but I do hope to see them be ported down the road so that I can have the entire series on my Steam library. Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection gives you two of the series' greatest entries with substantial improvements in graphical fidelity and performance while adding new bells and whistles and tweaks to what is already a masterpiece of the previous generation. And on top of that, being able to play it on the Steam Deck and on the go is cool, even if you can only get about an hour, hour and a half out of it. So, hey, it is what it is. And with that being said, I want to give a special thank you again to PlayStation 4 for providing a review copy of Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection for PC. I really enjoyed diving back into this again, and I really think that being able to play this on the Vita 2, aka the Steam Deck, has been an absolute joy. But I do think it does need to have better optimization so that you can not only play it, but not have to deal with like it being so hot. And I know that they can tweak and optimize it further. And, you know, with FSR 2.1, it should help it a lot with like the graphics because this looks really stunning on it already. Even though this is an 800 by 1280 display, it looks really good. And I just, I, I want to be able to play it for longer than an hour and a half. Now I know this is just a Steam Deck issue, but I'm hoping that we can get that resolved down the road. But anyways, what do you guys think? Is this something you're looking at picking up? Do you already have it? Have you played on the PlayStation 4 or previously the remaster on PlayStation 5? Whatever your thoughts are, let's go ahead and get the conversation going in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video, sub to the channel if you haven't already, and ding the notification bell so you stay up to date on all the latest and greatest content that comes from this channel. All that being said, I'm signing out. I hope you guys have a great and aloha rest of your day. I will uh, get back to playing this and I got a lot of other content coming in the works. So make sure you stay tuned. All that being said, I'll see you around. Stay safe. Be blessed. And uh, yeah, peace.